pocket a plan B because I guarantee you that I've, I'm not on the committee, but I've sat through enough of these uh, committee meetings to know that if you uh, apply for 700000 one of the questions the committee is going to ask you uh, during their interview with you, you'll need to make an in-person presentation, <coughs> bless you, probably in February. One of the questions I guarantee the committee is going to ask you is, you're asking for 700000 If we're only able to give you half of that, uh, could you complete part of your request with half the money? In other words, if we only awarded you somewhere between three hundred and four hundred thousand, is there some partial improvement that you could make uh, with a portion of your application? I, I guarantee you they're going to ask you that, and so you should be prepared to answer that question if you apply for the full seven hundred thousand. The other comment that I want to make um, about uh, Stewart's five options here is uh, something that Mary told me uh, before this evening's meeting started. Uh, which is that Stuart, my understanding is that Stuart came up with these estimates uh, in consultation with Tom Pace at MnDOT District 4, who is the project manager for the entire project in 2024. He was at, at your city council meeting two weeks ago, uh, Thomas Pace or Tom Pace at MnDOT District 4. Um, Stuart prepared these five options in this memo in consultation with uh, Tom Pace over the last two weeks. Um, I, it's my understanding that these five dollar figures that he came up with here is under the assumption that District 4 does not themselves construct any portion of what's listed immediately before the dollar figure. In other words, option one, option two, option three, option four, option five, the dollar figures that accompany those options are under the assumption that MnDOT doesn't help construct or help pay for the improvement that is immediately that is described immediately before that dollar figure yes that's what i was looking at now that was going to be my question because if you think about these from what i can see there today exists no sidewalk or no trail 10 foot wide trail in any of these areas and i think that was kind of what was in a sense talked about during our meetings uh the public meetings and and, and maybe the advisory meetings, but that where there is sidewalk now within the right of MnDOT's right of way, there was the potential that MnDOT would be taking care of the ADA, the sidewalks in those areas, depending on what has to be done. But in areas along 108 and 59 where there presently exists nothing, MnDOT was going to not take and go from nothing to put something in. That the city would be on, would be responsible for that, and 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 maybe even depending on what we do in the other areas. But so my take on this is these are all areas that there presently is nothing there that we'd like to see something put in based on the concepts that SRF did. Don, you're correct. So, sure, Mary wants to say something here. Afghan, um, Minda, Detroit Lakes. Tom wasn't able to be here. I guess what I talked to um, Patrick about prior to the meeting is that I still think you should keep some flexibility. The next step um, for the city and with um, Bob's help is to put in the, the letter of intent, which is due by the end of October. And I think that um, working with Tom, there needs to be some more detailed estimates. The estimates um, that was done by SRF are planning level estimates. And I don't, I mean, I know that um, Bob has talked to Tom, um, but I don't think we can at this point say it's black and white that we wouldn't participate in a trail. Right now, my understanding is that there's some counts being done, you know, and and that we have, in limited cases, funded trails when we felt there was a safety issue where people were walking out in our highway, and um, and so it's not black and white, and how the process um, will go from here if you decide um, to submit the, submit the letter of intent will be, since you're not a state aid city, um, Otterville County will need to be your sponsor. And um, they all have to pass a resolution. And in the past, they'd re they have required that 
the city that they're sponsoring pass also passes a resolution because it's it's a commitment on the county's part um, you know they're sponsoring you saying you know that you're going to provide the match and so obviously you will probably have to pass a resolution I think and that's done you know in conjunction with the completion of the application so that doesn't have to be done to get the letter of intent in though no so so I think you should I I think the recommendation should be that the the council approves that Don you working with Bob submit the letter of intent and gather more information working with um, you know our project manager because and then um, you'll have to review the actual application which will have the details and maybe it is priority one but um, I would hate to lose that flexibility say well you know this is the direction and then we start looking at more information and it it ends up you know it's you know it's the bottom priority see that's that's why I was cut when I was looking at this and from the discussions from what you just said it's kind of the discussions I remember too so it's it's because there's some unknowns here and and what you just said there are areas based on the studies that you guys are doing now with the cameras that there might be areas that presently don't have any infrastructure in that you guys might put in infrastructure because you see a safety need for it so from the council standpoint then as we work forward until we have more information maybe looking at these five items here or thinking outside of these five items from the city's council standpoint it could be maybe let's concentrate on what we can do what we need to do to potentially look at the areas that and it may be more than one the areas that we feel needs to be possibly included in an application and if it turns out that that where we don't have paths or sidewalks now but MnDOT is willing to look at based on their study putting that stuff in maybe we look at well of the of the four different segments north south east west if the city feels we really want to look at getting something in out to the west because of the apartment buildings and I'm speaking of my opinion right now but we need to get something out to the west but we also need to get something out up north towards the, the, the largest employer in Archel County. And um, so from my standpoint, if we can go forward looking at this, that we know that we'd like to do something there and we'd like to do something out to the east also, south and east, but these are the higher priority in our mind, but we don't know what MnDOT's willing to participate in yet because of the study they're doing, then from the council and the city standpoint, let's think about these are the two areas how can we get them both done under this grant based on the additional work that has to be done for the letter intent for the application so from my standpoint the higher priority is looking to see if can we do both of these but we need more information that's all I have unless there's questions I have one thing to add too after the, the, the uh, meeting last meeting where mr. pace was here we talked outside and he had mentioned this at the meeting that we had last meeting we had a bit <coughs> in uh, Detroit Lakes is he had talked about getting a meeting set up between city staff and MnDOT regarding cost sharing so and maybe he's waiting to see what the numbers come out at with the study that they're doing to set that meeting up and when I talked to Mr. Pace he had mentioned he wanted to have that meeting sooner rather than later so uh, before we actually have that meeting or I think that meeting will actually be pretty informative of hopefully we'll get more information on what they're thinking they're going to fund and whatnot so and hopefully we can have that meeting in the near future so at this point we do not have enough information to make a decision on this procedure um, as far as exactly which which, which roads you want to look at um, that's up to you folks from a, the city standpoint Don made a good point maybe we just start focusing on the west and the north right now and if we have to change gears we do um, as far as getting the letter of intent in, it sounds like there's a limited amount of information that's required for that. 
So I think the main thing is we get the letter of intent in, uh, which is due October 31st. They know that the city's gonna be coming with an application. You know, I think we've got some more time to probably iron some of this stuff out before the application is due, which is January 3rd. But my understanding is that letter of intent has to kind of have a dollar figure and some idea of what the scope is gonna be, east, west, north, south, whatever. It ha you have to have some idea, but really the, the in letter of intent is really so that we know who's applying for the dollars and so that Wayne can go out and, and do a site visit and meet with them. You know, some, otherwise we would just have applications coming out of the blue. So it's to get better applications. So yes, you wanna have information in the letter of intent, but that doesn't mean that if you put something in there, we don't go back and look at the letter of intent and go, oh, you said that you're gonna do this block and now you're doing three blocks. Um, we just understand that you have worked through more detail in your application, so. So then, council, we have two council meetings, the 8th and the 22nd, prior to the letter of intent having to be in on October 31st. Hopefully we'll have a meeting with Tom Pace here in short order and get more information, but I think, you know, without, you know, council having to think about making a decision tonight, at the next two council meetings, I think we'll have more discussion on this with the intent that by October 22nd, we'll have an actual, potentially a copy of what that letter of intent will look like for council to approve, and then it's just a matter of us going into the system and putting it in there. Does that sound like a plan? Yes, just one question, one clarification. Uh, are your two council meetings in October the 8th and the 22nd, or the 8th and the 29th? Oh, I'm sorry, 29th. Yep. yep. So the, the 29th is, uh, I mean, that's fine. Uh, the 29th is cutting it really close to the 31st, you know. So, um, but I, I mean, I agree in, in principle, though I agree with what Don's saying. I, I think uh, a, a discussion between the city and MnDOT District 4 is definitely in order. Uh, obviously, uh, with Bob's participation, and um, try to uh, get a uh, zero in a little bit more on, on what the cost sharing uh, would actually look like. And then by October 31st, submit your, your best guess, to put it crudely, you know, give them, give them your best guess based on the, on the best information you have by October 31st. So we'll take no action on this this evening, but is there any questions to Patrick or Mayor or Bob regarding this topic? Mr. Mayor, when does the resolution and county support come in there? That's at the January 3rd. It, it would be needed. Do we need to do it before the, before the letter of intent? No. Before the application, prior, January 3rd. Prior to the submittal of the application. Okay. okay. Any more questions? Hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Council, when we talk about this uh, during this work session, would we have some time to talk about this also on Monday? Yeah, let's, let's, okay. Yeah, we'll have all night. Yeah, it's good. All right. Okay, item number 11, Explore Minnesota Tourism Affiliate Welcome Center, MLM. It's in our packet. Don, you want to speak to us? Right. Yep. So, the Tourism Historic City Hall, uh, Explore Minnesota sent over a new Welcome Center what they refer to as Program Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. And so it was in the packets. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, it outlines the expectations um, and responsibilities of both parties. The term of this thing, it's a two-year term from January 1st, 2020 until December 31st, 2021. I didn't see anything in here that jumped out. It's really the kind of the same thing. It doesn't address the hours down there. It just talks about here's what we'll do and here's what we'll provide and here's what we hope that the city or expect the city to do and it's more or less of you know keep the information out there for people and make it free to people and that type of a thing. So uh, unless you have any direct questions regarding the agreement, I just need the approval to sign off on the agreement on the city's behalf 
and get this back to Explore Minnesota. I make a motion to approve the Explore Minnesota Tourism Affiliate Welcome Center Program Memorandum of Understanding. I'll second. Motion second. Discussion? 